here we are again. Um, sorry for the the delay. I wish I had approached this a little bit differently in, as far as uh, presenting this this uh, lesson to you. Uh, I think if, when I do it again, I'll, I'll paint the entire painting and uh, and then r run the whole thing to you. But this is the way we've done it. <coughs> now, as you can see. <coughs> Uh, I've I've done the the I've continued the process of drawing and <coughs> and uh, clarifying some of the things in in this painting. The most important thing I would like to say at this point is regarding this particular process in this particular painting uh, is that this is really well, up to this point. This is really the meat and potatoes, so to speak, of, of this process. Everything that we do from this point on is really a continuation of the things that we've talked about so far. You know, um, <clears throat> for example, one thing that I've done is I begin to, to see that I don't need this whole big canvas that I have here. So I've cut it down a little bit to a more manageable size, a more useful size. I just put a couple of pieces of tape across here, and uh, what this does is it, it begins to show the boundaries that I, that I really want. What I'll do is, when I'm finished with this painting, I'll just uh, cut this down and re-stretch it onto another uh, set of stretcher bars. I don't need all this space here, and, um, and so that's something that you, that's easily done. Uh, in case sometimes you're you're concerned about paintings which you've done and they don't really necessarily fit the canvas that you have have there ready, you can um, you can cut it down. So that's what I'm going to do. But in the in the process, I just put these pieces of tape on there to give me some guidelines. Now, uh, I really think that that so far we have a nice little self portrait here. Uh, nice being that we're not really looking for anything uh, special other than a good likeness and to show you how to approach uh, the process of uh, this this process of uh, of painting what you see and more or less we've done that what I'm going to do from this point on is just a continuation of of refining what we've done already. So which, what that basically means is we're just sort of going over it all again. We're using a little more medium. By medium I mean uh, 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 the, the, uh, the oil and turpentine mix. 50% oil, 50% turpentine, uh, which, I, which I use. Um, and this brings up the quality of the paint and it makes it richer and stronger. But it's really the same technique, only this time with the addition of more medium. Uh, and the reason that I'm, I'm going into that now is because I'm really quite satisfied with the, the painting thus far. And what, what we know is so far this, is, uh, this has been basically a turpentine uh, and no real medium involved. But uh, as we need some medium now, we'll, 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 we'll apply it. Now what I want to what I want to do from this point now is I want to sort of make a little painting, uh, finish finish this painting. Now I'm, I've decided I'm not going to do all this shirt and the business down in the bottom here. It doesn't it isn't necessary for what we're doing right now. But I will do a little background. I will clarify this headpiece. And the reason I've left this for so long is that. Uh, it's, it's going to be kind of complicated, and it's going to take a lot of fiddly little painting. <clears throat> and, uh, and then I'll go back, and I'll, I'll sort of start from up here. I'll get a nice muted color, a color which, is, which I feel in my mind is going to accent this headpiece. Now the light is shining right down on top of my head, and so this is going to be very bright. So what I'll do is I'll put a darkish color, and by when I say darkish, and I'm not very, very um, um, particular uh, in the color choice that I make, 
it's going to be a mixture of some browns and some grays and just something, some dark value. It, it doesn't have to be red or it doesn't have to be blue. It just has to be some sort of darky shade. And I'll show you how I go about doing that. Anyway, and I'll I'll put that in, and that'll give me what that'll give me a, a point of reference, a color reference. At this point, you want to accent and exaggerate a lot, a lot of things to make a more interesting picture. So I'll I'll choose a darker color here because I want I want to really exaggerate the light on top of the headpiece here, um, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So. Uh, uh, I'll go over to the palette here and I'll show you the, the background, the colors that I'm going to use for a background. So now I'm going to, you know, I've, I've sat around a little bit this morning and I'm thinking about, okay, what am I going to do on this painting now? Uh, we've talked about the idea, I'm going, to, I'm going to put some background on, I'm going to work on this headpiece. And so I put out on my palette here a bunch of different colors which I know I'm going to employ um, at some, some time uh, today. So, I've put our regular palette on, which is the white and the flesh tone and the, and the raw sienna and these sorts of things. I've also added a, some other things. I've added some uh, orange and some green and some cadmium red um, and some turquoise, and which are colors that I would not use in, in the uh, portrait palette, but I'm definitely going to have to use them at some point in this really strange multicolored headpiece that I'm wearing here. And I chose this headpiece in particular, even though it may look a little silly. I like it, and it's very colorful and interesting, and show you and and, and show you uh, uh, how to paint something that's a little bit more intricate. This is a headpiece that we got down in Guatemala. I bought a whole bunch of them uh, because I keep the hair out of my eyes when I'm playing golf. Uh, anyway, so. I've, I've put all these additional colors out there. I'm not going to use them right now. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to mix up a little uh, color uh, to go in this darkish background. I'm going to do that first because I, n next I want to go into this headpiece, which is very light up here. So I want to I want to find a nice color range there. So I'm going to take uh, a little bit of white. I'm going to put it up here on the top of my palette so it doesn't get in my way later on. Um, I'm going to take a little burnt umber, mix that in. I'm um, going to need some more because I want this to be pretty dark. I'm going to I'm going to add some raw umber. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to pick up a little black. I'm just trying. What I'm looking for is sort of a browny gray dark value which I can use at the top, which is going to be dark, and I'm going to lighten it up a little bit down on the bottom here. And I think I'm going to lighten it uh, with a reddish value. So we'll do that in a second. But first the dark. Now you notice I'm not being real specific or real particular here. I'm just watching my palette and imagining uh, a, a color. So again, I'm adding some more black. I'm making it darker and darker. I'm going to even throw in a a little bit of red right here. This is a, a cadmium red deep. But you can really use any sort of reddish value. Uh, here I'm, I'm checking it. I'm checking it uh, to see if it's dark enough. Um, I think I'm going to go even a little bit darker. And to darken it up I'm going to use a little ultramarine blue. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick up some more of this red. And the blue and the red make a nice kind of a browny, purpley kind of a color that I like. It's warm. So, let's try that. 